Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about special senses, in particular the eye. I have printed out a picture from your textbook of a cross section of the eye and we'll just start uh, from the outside and we'll work our way in. So in the eye there are three tunics. A tunic is a layer. The outermost layer is called the sclera. The sclera is the white part of your eye, so on the anterior and posterior sides of the eye, it's white. It's going to bulge forward in the anterior part of your eye to form something called the cornea. The cornea is a clear layer where light can actually come through the eye. The rest of the sclera is a white color, and its primary function is to protect the eye. Okay, so the second layer is called the choroid. And you can see it kind of pink here. So the choroid on the lateral and posterior sides of the eye, it has the function of bringing blood vessels. So it has a good, it has a good blood supply. The other function that it has is that it is dark. It absorbs stray light rays so that light rays don't just bounce around and around in here. So it absorbs light. And our third function is that at the anterior part, it's going to thicken and it's going to form the iris. So it's going to have a couple of structures in the anterior part. One of them is the iris. The iris is a ring of muscles. In the middle, it's open. So inside of the iris, or where the iris isn't, is going to be the pupil. And again, the pupil is where the light rays are going to come through the cornea and go through the hole in this muscle that we call the iris. Just behind the muscle of the iris, we have a thickened area called the ciliary body. That ciliary body is a muscle, and that muscle can contract and relax. That muscle is attached to these strings called the suspensory ligaments. that are attached all the way around the lens. So when light comes into the eye, it's going to go through the cornea, through the hole in the iris that we call the pupil, and it will be focused by that lens on the back of the eye. So all of that stuff, the iris, the ciliary body, and the suspensory ligaments are all part of that choroid tunic. Now our third tunic, is called the retina. That's the innermost layer of the eye, and you can see it's sort of gold on this picture, kind of a golden color. And the retina is what contains the photoreceptors. Now remember, photoreceptors are a special kind of sensory receptor that are stimulated by light energy. And we have two types of photoreceptors in the eye. We have cones, and cones pick up color light, colored light. So there are three different types of cones. We have cones that will um, be activated by blue light. We have cones that will be activated by green light. And there are cones that will be activated by red light. So isn't that nice? I have a color for each of them. So we have three kinds of cones that can be activated. The reason why we can see all the different shades that we can see is that as light comes into the eye and goes through to the retina, the light will activate different numbers of these cones. So for example, light that's blue would activate mostly blue cones light that's sort of an aqua color 
might activate mostly blue cones, but also activate some green cones. And light that's purple might activate some blue cones, very few green cones, and lots of red cones. So we can distinguish colors through integration. We can sum up all the different signals that are coming into the eye and determine what color the light is. We also have rods. So we have cones are one type of photoreceptor and rods are another type of photoreceptor. And rods only pick up black and white images, shades of gray. Now the problem with the cones is they require bright light. It's very hard to see colors in very, very dim light. Rods, however, work really well in dim light. There's also a difference of where these photoreceptors are in the retina. So if you are light and you're coming in through the cornea, through the pupil, past the lens, this lens is actually going to try to focus all of the light in this area right here. That's called the fovea centralis. This is where the greatest concentration of cones are in the entire retina. So if you want to see something very clearly and in bright color, you're going to be picking it up mostly right here. So the cones are in the fovea centralis mostly. The rods are scattered around on the periphery. Again, the cones need bright light. The rods can function in dim light. In addition, the rods are pretty good at picking up motion. So for example, if you see something out of the corner of your eye on your peripheral vision, it's most likely going to be rods that are being activated by stray light rays from the side. Usually what happens when you see something off to the side, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna turn your head and you're gonna focus your very best, very brightest vision on that spot. So again, peripheral vision is there to tell us something's going on. We respond to that information by turning our head to look directly at what we caught out of the corner of our eye. So those are the three tunics, the sclera, the choroid, and the retina. We also have some fluid in these chambers. This chamber out here, between the iris and the cornea, is filled with something that we call aqueous humor. Oops, that's a U. In the back of the eye, so behind the lens and the ciliary body, we have something called vitreous humor. Now the vitreous humor is a lot thicker and more jelly-like than the aqueous humor. The aqueous humor is really quite thin. It is secreted by the ciliary body. It comes up through the pupil and it's going to drain out through a special canal in the eye. The vitreous humor's job is to hold the layers in place and to support the lens and the retina. We have to be careful though, because we don't want to get too much vitreous humor. Too much vitreous humor would actually push against the retina and it would compress some of the blood vessels in the choroid tunic. This would result in not enough blood getting to the photoreceptors and could result in those photoreceptors dying. Too little vitreous humor and there's not enough pressure of the retina against the choroid. The retina could potentially peel away from the choroid, causing, again, a loss of blood supply to the cells in the retina and potential cell death. Uh, when that happens, that's called a detached retina. There's one other structure that you'll see here. This is the optic nerve. So all of the photoreceptors all the way through the retina 
have nerves attached to them and all of those nerves will come and bundle together and leave the eye on the optic nerve. In this area right here, there are no photoreceptors. Because there are no photoreceptors, this part of the eye is called the blind spot or the optic disc. Now, the right eye and the left eye both have blind spots, but because we have two functioning eyes, those blind spots don't overlap, so we don't notice them. Now, one of the other things that the eye must do is it must focus on things that are both close and far away. So the default is far away. When things are far away from you, the light rays will come in, they will enter through the pupil. Remember, the pupil is the hole in the iris muscle. The light rays will then be bent by the lens and those rays will come back to this fovea centralis where they will stimulate photoreceptors, which will then send action potentials to the brain. One of the jobs of the eye is to be able to adapt to different situations. One of the situations is that you're looking at something really far away, and another situation might be that you're looking at something like really up close to you. And the eye needs to be able to autofocus, essentially. And we call this accommodation. And there's two parts to this. There's distant vision and there's up close vision. And in the eye, the default is distant vision. What that means is that you can look at something that's far away for a really long time and you won't get tired. However, in close-up vision, your eyes tend to get tired. So if you've been looking at your screen or reading uh, you know, your textbook for a really long time, in close-up vision or accommodated vision, your eyes tend to get tired, whereas in distant vision, not so much. And the reason for this is that when you're looking at something with distant vision, the light rays are coming from far away, and they're coming in this direction, and they're hitting, they're going through the cornea, through the aqueous humor, through the pupil, and they're hitting the lens and they're getting bent. But they don't have to get bent that much because the light rays are coming in at a pretty parallel angle. So remember the ciliary muscles are back here. The ciliary muscles in distant vision are relaxed. And remember, they're attached to the suspensory ligaments. In a eye that is looking to the distance, the suspensory ligaments are tight. And they're going to pull on that lens and make the lens rather thin and flat. So a lot of people have trouble visualizing why this is so. So think about it like this. You know when you have a muscle, I'm just gonna draw it out here. You have a muscle, say your bicep in your arm. When it's relaxed, it's nice and long and it's pretty thin. Oops, thin. When you contract your muscle, go ahead and bend your arm, contract your muscle, the muscle's gonna get shorter and it's also going to get fatter. So contraction causes muscles to shorten. When you relax your muscle again, it's gonna relax out nice and long again. In the case of ciliary muscles here, these muscles, when they're relaxed, they're gonna relax away from the lens. They're gonna relax towards the posterior part of the eye. So as they relax, they're actually gonna pull on the suspensory ligaments. But the suspensory ligaments don't take a lot of energy. They don't take any energy, really. They're just sitting there attached to the lens. So as the, as the ciliary muscles relax, they're gonna pull on the suspensory ligaments, which are going to pull on the lens and make it nice and thin and flat. This means, because the lens is kind of thin, the um, light rays don't have to bend as much.
In close-up vision, however, we have our ciliary muscles here and here, and they're contracted. And remember, they're gonna do the opposite thing. They're gonna contract towards the front of the eye. So they're gonna get shorter this direction. And that's going to make those suspensory ligaments loose. And because the lens doesn't have a lot of ligaments pulling on it and flattening it out, it gets fat or rounded. The reason we need it to be fatter, you can see that it's fatter here. The reason we need it to be fatter is because the thing you're looking at is really right up close. And so the light rays are at a much bigger angle because they're much closer to your eye. And so not only do we have to bend the light rays to go to the fovea centralis, but we have to bend these light rays the opposite direction. And so that lens has to be fatter to be able to bend the light rays so much. These light rays are coming in almost straight. And so to bend them, we only have to bend them a little bit, so we only need a little bit of lens. We don't have to make it so fat. When you're reading something, maybe your textbook, your ciliary muscles are contracted that whole time and muscles tire after a while. And so you tend to get tired eyes during visual accommodation because it's too close up. In distant vision, those muscles are relaxed so you can go all day long and not have tired eyes. When people get older, they often have problems with close-up vision. They need reading glasses. So the reason for that is as you get older, the lens here loses its elasticity. So when the ciliary bodies uh, contract and move forward and the suspensory ligaments get loose, the lens doesn't get quite so fat. It might only get a little bit fat. And so you can't see up close as well. The word for that is called presbyopia. It is usually age related. That's pretty much for the eye. Be sure to check back in for the next video, which will be special senses, the ear. See you in class.